Who's here? Hello. Hi, old friend. How you doing? Oh, good to see you. Good to see you. <laughs> Alive and above ground is better. It's always best. It's always better. Always right? better. That's true. Yeah. We'll true. see each other later. <laughs> yes, well, I met Mickey at a birthday party for Ala Raka, one of the great musicians of our age. And Mickey was a student of Ala Raka's, right? That's correct. Very much so. And I, I had heard him on record. Actually, Phil gave me the record of uh, Drums of North and South India. And I kept listening to that record, and I couldn't believe one guy was playing all of that. And so I found out that it was truly one, one fellow. He was playing in Mineola in New York. I remember it really well. And I went up to see him, and I, he couldn't speak English very well. And, and, and I asked him, you know, if he would teach me. And he told me, well, come to my apartment, you know. And, and, and I said, okay, fine. So I brought my, this thing called a trinome, which was a, a, a metronome that had three settings. You can have three different setting simultaneously different groupings of rhythm and the drum pad and I walked in I stayed for four days and nights and he just he gave me there was this outpouring of this profusion of uh, knowledge that came out me and of course it was overwhelming and then I became a student I mean I couldn't believe what he was doing to rhythm and so this is where the, we met right after that I believe that's right. I didn't remember the sequence of events, but yes. Actually, I have, he left me his tabla. His wow. Drum. There's wow. Three, three of his high drums. One Zakir has, one his brother has, and one I have. It was really amazing when Zakir presented me with mm -hmm. the, his shawl and mm -hmm. his drum. I have it here Beautiful. in my office. Mm -hmm. It's really one of my most prized possessions. You know, it's a piece of them. Mm -hmm. And when did I visit the uh, Dream Lab? You visited the Dream Lab before we met Rolling Thunder. I see, right in between. Right? That's right. Maybe that same time while I was in New York. When you were in New York, yes. Yeah. And when people heard that you were coming to the Dream Lab, everybody had an excuse to take a coffee break or a bathroom break so they could be in the lobby when you walked through the door <laughs> into, the, into the building. It was a wonderful place. I, I couldn't believe a place like that existed. It was sort of like in the catacombs, very quiet. Yes. You don't ever hear anything that quiet, you know. You close those doors, it was like an anechoic chamber. You know, it's as close to anechoic as you can get, I imagine, don't you think? Yes, very, very much so. Very quiet, no reverberant at all. Mm -hmm. I really love the silence. Coming from such a loud, loud world, going to the Dream Lab was, uh, was certainly another sonic um, um, moment for me. It was quite heroic of you, actually, you know, uh, in those days, you know, using uh, psychoactive drugs and and therapy and, and experimentation. I remember that. I thought that was um, remarkable. I worked with people who had been given psychoactive drugs by their therapists I see. and then did the parapsychological tests and mm -hmm. the altered states of consciousness mm -hmm. tests with them. Mm -hmm. But that reminds me of the Port Chester, Long Island, New York gig that the Grateful Dead did when we tried to transmit a oh picture to Malcolm Besant, who was sleeping at the Dream Lab. And Richie Havens. Richie Havens was tied in with that. Somewhere. Yeah, yeah he did the, the they were pilot sleeping study. Around, uh, sleeping around. And we were trying to, we had what, like five nights or six or seven nights? Yep. Right? Mm -hmm. We had enough nights so we could do a statistical test on it. And Malcolm Besant was in the lab and we woke up Malcolm every time he had these rapid eye movements mm -hmm. and he was trying to dream about the picture that was flashed on the screen I in remember. back of the Great I remember Dead. you were behind the uh, soundboard yes. and no one knew what the pictures were you flashed the pictures on right. and we asked the audience to beam them exactly to the dream lab exactly right? I remember this I remember us doing it. We stopped the music, was it? And then at some time, we're in between the songs. We stopped the music while we flashed the instructions on the screen. Yeah, that's that's right.
And then you started the music again as the people began to, uh, you know, focus, focus on, the, on the image. Mm -hmm. It was on the light show screens. Exactly. Right. We have a very beautiful picture of the seven spinal chakras in this yogi meditating. When I saw that, I said, no way. No one's going to guess this. And sure enough, there was like more hits than not, right? More um, hits than not, yeah. He did incredibly well on it. Malcolm Besant had all these dreams about a man who had undergone spiritual training. He had an energy box in his body. And one thing after another tied in with the energy picture. box is good. Yeah. That was an amazing thing, you know, the idea of group power and thought, being able to trans translate that thought process into real information and actually send it. Right. Got it. I remember it really well. Then you wrote it up. You pu oh, yes. You published it. Oh. We published it, and that has been picked up and published in a dozen different places, including this new book on the sociology of the Grateful Dead. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, good. Yeah, those were interesting times. Oh, there was one great experiment that Stanley was part of, and me and Billy, and he told Billy that it was time perception, and what he did was, he said, okay, you're going to, everything that you hear, the, uh, the track that you hear, he was playing to a track, is going to come real slow to you. And then you'll be able to play in and out of everything. And then he said to me, it's going to come very fast to you, so you'll be able to play around it. And so what we were doing is we were, we were perceiving each other in different ways, whereas I was able to play, it felt like it was coming so fast, so I had to play really slow to be able to fit everything in, and it was the opposite for Bill. And um, it was an amazing uh, experiment in, in altered time perception. And I, I remember that really well. As a matter of fact, I still have the recording. It's called Bill's Box. I, I just discovered it. And it was that experiment when we were, and Stanley's on the, on the tape uh, uh, giving us these, uh, these uh, suggestions. And then we went into hypnosis and, uh, and we played uh, for, I don't know, 20, 30, 40 minutes. I can't remember. But it was, uh, that was a remarkable day. Uh, it, it, it taught me about... Um, the expansion and contraction of time and how you perceive time and how time is totally flexible if you can perceive that flex. And it made the Grateful Dead music into something different because then we, we were able to flex and contract at will and not worry about it and also create a new one or a new beginning and ending uh, to things and it wasn't set in stone. So when you start perceiving things in another realm and you become comfortable with it and you can share that with someone else, then it becomes real. These experiments affected our audience in, in, in a tremendous way. Uh, it, was, um, it allowed our audience to be able to become deep listeners. And deep listening is it's when you, you hear below what you the obvious and you hear inside of things and that's the spirit voice of everything and so once they were able to let go of the metric and that everything had to be perfect and had to be in what you would call in clock time metric time in earth time then you were able to fly you were able to experience other realms of thought and that that's where all the good stuff is. You know, most of the good stuff you'll find on the periphery of things. That's where the real rich stuff happens. It doesn't usually happen in, in your normal perception. When you see, it, you see something, you say, well, that's the way it is. No, you have to look at it or hear at it and have some real ear play or eye play and, all, and just focus on it and get in that moment, become part of it, become one with it, and then let go of everything you know and then go with what is happening in the moment. If you can do that, then there, there's, there's a chance of great beauty. You know, you can actually create something that's worthwhile creating as opposed to recreating. So that's what it gave the audience. It gave the audience a license to fly and a license to be able to go to these, um, these realms of perception that were not necessarily right in front of you. They were, they ha there was a multi-tiered layers of uh, perception and that was, that's what this. That's what that's what this uh, situation is all about. That's what um, the Grateful Dead music is all about. That's what trance drumming is all about. Uh, that's what the psychic experience is all about. Beautiful.
you read my mind. That's cool. <laughs> well, that's what I'm here for. <laughs>